Hi, I'm Harsh Tulani and I'm excited to share with you today's video because it's going to completely change your perspective as you learn why the airline industry is one of the worst industries for an investor to get into. And as you watch this video, you may begin to discover how something can create value for the end user, the passengers, while at the same time be value destroying for the investors. As you follow along, you may begin to uncover what are the underlying causes of this and how you can utilize this knowledge towards other industries. There is a saying, if you want to be a millionaire, start with a billion dollars and launch a new airline. Over the last few weeks, you may have read about the financial trouble plaguing jet airways. Any new story which you read will say that this is due to the rising price of aviation fuel. However, they all miss the root cause of this. Yes. Rising crude prices is a catalyst, but this is not the underlying reason. Why is it that in spite of the number of passengers increasing every year, every few years an airline can't afford to pay its bills? In 2012, Kingfisher went bankrupt. In 2014, SpiceJet nearly shut down. There was another crisis in Jet Airways in 2009 and in 2007, Deccan Airlines sold itself to Kingfisher after making years of losses. And if you are above a certain age, you will also remember Modi Luft, East West Airlines, Damania Air and Sahara Air. Every few years, there has been a bankruptcy of a major player and it is hard to find an industry with such a high failure rate. This has been observed not just in India but also around the world. And in every major market where government monopolies have been lifted, an airline goes bust every 6-7 to seven years. Now I'll admit that millions of people have benefited from the rise of the airline industry. The world has become a smaller place and it has contributed to the growth of commerce. However, as per some estimates, from the invention of the airplane until today, the airline industry has lost more money than it has made. In order to understand why, let us imagine that you are at a restaurant and wish to order your favorite dish. Compared to other items on the menu, will happily pay a little extra for it. If you are in the mood for a particular food item, you are not going to order something else just because it is slightly cheaper. You are okay paying a bit more for something that has a difference in quality, taste or experience. But what happens when one goes to buy flight tickets? Irrespective of the airline, the experience that one goes through on your flight is almost the same. If the flight attendants were to change their uniforms, you probably wouldn't be able to tell which airline you are flying. When you go to book tickets, the most important thing you look at is the takeoff and the landing time and the price of a ticket. You don't care which airline it is. In fact, if there was another flight which leaves 10 minutes earlier and is just 50 rupees cheaper, you will take that flight. There is no brand loyalty. Your most important criteria is the price of a ticket and the only thing which other airlines can do to win your business is to cut prices and to get into a fair war amongst themselves. And to make matters worse, the airlines have a deadline. If a flight takes off without having enough occupancy, the airline makes a loss. The fixed costs are the same no matter how full the flight is. The airline needs to pay the lease rental for the aircraft, the salaries for the pilots, the cabin crew and the ground staff, the landing and the parking fees and maintenance. While at the same time, the marginal cost of adding extra passenger is negligible. By cutting the price of a ticket and attracting you from other competitors, the airline makes at least some money from you. However, if you were to fly on another airline, your seat goes empty and they earn nothing. If the additional cost of taking one more passenger is for example 100 rupees, the airlines will compete against each other and fight to sell your ticket for 101 rupees as they now make at least 1 rupee from you even though the fixed costs might be much higher. It is very hard to stop these suicidal price wars. Across the world, there have been cases where one CEO decided to raise prices just enough to cover costs and make a reasonable profit for the shareholders. However, rather than follow his lead and raise prices, other competitors used it as an opportunity to steal away their customers. As a result, no one wants to take the risk of raising prices. It's nearly impossible to make extraordinary profits in such a scenario. 
in a business selling a commodity type product it's very hard to be a lot smarter than your dumbest competitor in fact most ceos and cfos in this industry aren't even trying to enrich their shareholders they are just trying to survive it's really hard for the management to make money by doing something different in certain industries no matter how clever the management is it is very difficult to overcome the laws of economics while in certain industries even an incompetent ceo can make billions for its shareholders the more you think about it the more you may begin to realize that there are some industries which are like a sailboat even a genius captain can't go beyond a certain speed and there are some industries which are like a motor boat even an idiot can do well and eventually an idiot will run the company while investing the capabilities of the management is very important however the underlying economics of the business is far more important so how can an airline then make money one of the ways that a company can improve profits is by controlling costs however most of the costs in an airline are fixed and cannot be changed another way is to use the same model of aircraft in your entire fleet this makes pilots interchangeable and significantly reduces maintenance costs while this was considered to be a revolutionary idea 20 years ago nowadays most airlines have moved towards this model some airlines developed an expertise in being able to turn around planes quickly the lesser time an aircraft is on the ground the more flights it makes and hence more money but this too is now a standard industry practice another way is to use a hub and spoke model but this strategy has its own pros and cons on one hand it increases the number of passengers per flight and one can potentially develop a regional monopoly while on the other hand it leads to more travel time for the passengers however the long standing solution for the industry as a whole to become profitable is if players drop out and there is consolidation and yet people still enter the airline business they are seduced by the growth in passenger numbers without realizing that investors don't get to keep any of the revenue furthermore it is a glamorous and sexy industry and it feels good for a high profile billionaire to say i own an airline some very successful and shrewd businessmen have invested in airlines however they needed better advisors to tell them not to make such a decision these billionaires needed a trusted advisor someone who has the right principles in place and has a deep understanding of how to analyze an industry someone who will treat the money as their own and is concerned about the safety and security of the investments and it's not just them it's even people like you who need advice on how to invest and grow your money as you look back on what you learned in this video you may begin to find your own reasons to hire me to manage your investments if you click on the link in the description below i will have someone from my team reach out to you If you enjoyed this video and felt that you got something of value do press the subscribe button and share it with your friends thank you for watching see you next time